Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects, and I've got another animation uh, tutorial. This one we're uh, going to be blocking out our pendulum to do our pendulum animation. Uh, we went through and we created a character set in my previous animation, and we can see we have my character set here for all pendulum. And now the next thing we want to do is block out uh, the animation. So we're going to use step timing and uh, uh, to, uh, to, to do the blocking. That allows us to essentially do pose to pose animation for setting this up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in and change our preferences. So we go to Windows, Setting and Preferences, Preferences, and here we click Animation. Or another way to do this really quick is you come down here and you click this little running guy in the corner with the gear which is your animation preferences and you click that it opens up to the time slider if we just come up here and click on animation uh, we can see our animation preferences now i changed this previously but if you've just opened up windows and if you've never changed any of your animation settings both of these are going to be set to auto and we don't want to use auto uh, we want to use, uh, again, step timing. So we want our tangents to be set for our tangent in to be set to clamped. And we want our out tangents to be set to stepped. And when doing that, we will get the correct uh, types of keys put in so we can do our animation. So set those and let's hit save. Uh, the next thing is, is we don't want to be uh, animating in a perspective camera view. Uh, we're just going to be doing uh, in the YZ plane. And so the best way to do that is let's go over here and look at our side X. And we can see that we're in our YZ plane. If you happen to have your grid showing, uh, that's nothing but annoying. I would suggest turning that off. Uh, and, and we can go from there. So now the next thing we want to do is we will block out our timing. I'm just going to do a quick kind of a block out. I don't want to be doing the students homework for them, but I'll do a quick block out to show how you might want to put things together. So to do the initial blocking, we only want to animate this top part. So I really don't want keys on the rest of the tail coming down here initially. I'm going to set up my block timing just by moving the top. So we'll go and put our playhead at time zero. Uh, You'll notice I'm in the animation workspace, so I have the graph editor showing below. I've got my outliner on the side, and I've got my uh, side view camera here. So let me select the top uh, controller, and I'm going to move this over to the side. And I want to make sure that I have auto keying set right here. And auto keying will key all of the parameters that change, okay? So the parameters that change in this case will be the ones that from the top. Again, I'm not going to be changing uh, the values here, but initially at times frame zero, I want everything to have a keyframe. So I'm gonna hit the S key right now, and that's going to set a key on everything. And I know it has set a key on everything because here's all my controllers. And I can step through each one and notice each of these as a key at frame zero. All right, so we do want a starting position for everything. All right, our animation is at 24 frames a second, so I wanna go one second in, and I wanna move my uh, pendulum to the next place. So let's move our playhead to 24, come out here and grab this, and I'm going to slide him about three quarters of the way in view. And notice that keys have been set now for the X doesn't move, but Y moved, or Z moved and Y moved, all right? And because those both moved, we have keys on them. Uh, uh, the auto key fe feature went in and put in stepped keys for us. That's exactly what we want. So the next... Uh, event the next major key is going to be at 48 frames I'm going to come in select this and I'm going to move this to here all right and uh, if I want to zoom my graph uh, in the graph editor that's easy to do I hold down alt and left mouse button and I can drag now 
one thing that sometimes I find annoying is the graph editor will zoom, but it won't necessarily the zoom the way I want to. So let's say I wanted to zoom in my y-axis in up and down and not in the uh, horizontal. If you hold down Alt or Option and Alt for PC, Option for Mac, and then the Shift key at the same time, and now I left mouse button and I slide up and down, I can scale just in my up and down axis. If I do that same key function again, but this time I initially drag left and right, I can scale in the horizontal axis. So by just using the combination of uh, Option Shift or Alt Shift and then dragging with the left mouse button in the direction you want to scale, you can scale your graph editor so it looks better and you're seeing what you want. Uh, so my last and final key is going to be out here at 72 frames. And I'm going to take the whole pendulum and slide it over to this side. And that's it. That's going to be my animation. And again, same thing. I have set uh, keys properly on my translate Y and translate Z. I have no rotations, so there's no rotations in the X. And on these other ones, the going down the chain, we haven't put any rotations in there. And that's why I didn't want to key them. That's why I did not hit the S key going across here. If I typed S, it would set keys on everything. And I would have to just go in. It makes more work for me. I'd have to go in and redo everything. By not doing that, I've got my initial blocking set. So let's go in. And now we will go down that chain and we'll start to set up the keys for what this looks like uh, at the various points going down the chain. So what I want to do is actually initially put in some breakdowns. Breakdowns typically are where the next major sub minor sub key is in this particular case in frame count it happens to be the best place happens to be midway breakdowns don't always end up being that sometimes a breakdown will be one quarter of the timing in or maybe three quarters of the timing in so don't assume that something is a breakdown it's always at the halfway point but usually depending upon your scene and what your animation is doing that's that's a a, a good place for it so in this position, I want to take this and I want to move it. And there is a bug that you see in the pendulum rig where I went in to do a move and it just grabbed the top part and it didn't grab anything else. Uh, it, I don't know why it does that. It was, uh, it's a bug obviously in the rig. If you just hit Command Z or Control Z and do an undo and then hit it, slide it again, it'll go to where you want. So right here is my breakdown about there <clears throat> so I want to put this position in first again I'm just gonna work with the, the top play hit so that's my first breakdown I go into 36 and 36 is going to be a breakdown between this position and that position which is about midway on the screen so same thing again hit undo drag this about here so there's my breakdown for that and then my last breakdown is going to be the midpoint between here and here. So that'll be at frame 60. I move it and I put it about right there. So there's my breakdown points. So now that I have my breakdowns, I can start to put in uh, going down this chain where I want these rotations on the tail to look like. Well, what has happened is this pendulum has rapidly moved from the very left side of the screen and it is swinging over to go to the right side. Well, you want to show some drag, and by putting in some drag, we can easily do that by putting rotations going down this chain. So let's go in and we'll add those uh, rotations so we can show drag. So I go in and uh, let me select this controller and type E. Let's see if this works. No. Nope. Okay. So this has the same bug that the uh, top level one does. Same kind of thing. Hit Control Z, do an undo, and now I can add a rotation there. 
and let's go in here and I can add a rotation and go here and add a rotation so I'm just trying to show the uh, drag and if I go in and uh, use my uh, the comma key to go back in the period key to jump forward to the next keyframe we can we can see the drag that I'm adding to that all right so then let's go to the next keyframe which is over here and that would be about the same except this is going to eventually ease in and as it ease in it's going to slow down so these will actually start to swing back a little bit so for just my blocking I actually want to show this coming back this way Maybe not completely to a straight line, but because it's slowing down, uh, it's going to it's going to straighten out somewhat. Again, to the to the degree we can clean up, but for our blocking, this this will give us a good view of what our blocking should be. So let me go back. We start with nothing. We start moving. We have some drag, and then we're starting to slow down right at this point. All right. So then let's go to our uh, next place and this is our next break point now we should have drag going completely the other way so I want to put that in <clears throat> because the distance is shorter it may not be going as fast so I'm slowing I'm uh, reducing the amount of drag as opposed to the previous one and so we're here and we jump to there and back so here's our start first break point first key first uh, second break point and then so now same kind of thing we're going to ease into this so this probably is going to look a little more like this there will be some slowing down and breaking and so the pendulum is going to start to move like this it won't fully come to a straight line probably you'll need to have either the pendulum be stationary or it'll start to move back to the right and when it does that then this tail will start to move that way but i think for a a, a first pass breakdown that makes that is good <clears throat> so let's go back to the beginning so here's our start next frame next frame next frame next frame and then here's our next frame same kind of thing now I'm in full swing this direction this direction and this direction and go to the final <clears throat> same kind of thing we would slow in so he's gonna be a little bit like this a little this way and a little that way so let's go all the way back to the beginning and let's play this through <clears throat> take a look at what we got here and for just an initial blocking I think I'm happy with this and I have things initially set up the way that I want to do it. On the next tutorial we'll go through and we're going to change our timing so then we can uh, first look at a linear timing and then look at a spline timing to see how that smooths things out. So this has been Phil with PhilFX and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.